Hello, everybody. We're so glad to be with you again today on Believing for Beyond. I'm Steve Mitchell. I'm Denise Mitchell. And uh, we, we're excited about sharing some things that we hope will be a blessing to your life and to your marriage. And we've been dealing with the importance of trust in marriage. And uh, today we're going to talk about some of the symptoms of loss of trust, what causes loss of trust. And a lot of it is common to us. A lot of it is just simply called flesh that we give ourselves into, that we allow uh, the enemy to take control of our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, and kind of uh, just sidetrack us and lead us in the wrong direction. And we want to guard against that, but yes. uh, we, we want to talk about some causes of loss of trust today. And uh, hopefully through talking about causes, we can learn to avoid them. But if we do fall into traps, thank God that's not the end because right. God's there to pick us up. That's right. uh, the Word of God even says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, but though he fall, he won't be utterly cast down because the Lord is there to lift him up. And, and uh, I thank God that he's there. Even, even a good man or a good woman can fall and yes. fall into uh, the snares of the enemy because the devil's tactic is always to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And that definitely applies to our relationship in marriage. Yes. Uh, the devil hates what God loves. God loves marriage. God loves love. God loves you. So everything that God loves, the devil is opposed to. So he's going to come out after it uh, with everything that's in him. And he'll use the uh, weaknesses of our lives, the, the failures, the, uh, the negativity of our lives, the, the flesh of our lives to sidetrack us and derail us and keep us from the purpose of God. But thank God there's always grace and there's always hope and there's always restoration. But before we get to restoration, we want to talk about loss of trust. And a very familiar passage of scripture that we can start with is found in James chapter one, verse four. And the word of God says, from whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Uh, come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? And the, uh, the Passion Translation says it like this, James chapter 1, verse 4, uh, um, chapter 4, verse 1. What is the cause of your conflicts and quarrels with each other? Doesn't the battle begin inside of you as you fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires? And uh, unfortunately, that's something all of us have to deal with. Uh, we all want our own way. We all want our own desires. We... Uh, we all have to be willing to die to ourselves. If we're not willing to die to ourselves, the devil is going to magnify ourself and magnify our flesh right. and get us to the point where we want our way all the time and we start uh, we stop preferring our spouse above ourselves. And uh, when we do that, we get in trouble. When we when we get selfish and unconcerned about our spouse, that's when the devil can take advantage yes. of us and. Uh, cause us to walk into traps that he plants for us and uh, cause us to uh, break our, our bond together and lose trust in each other and for each other. When the scripture talks about preferring your brother, so many times we apply that to our relationships in the church. We apply it to right. people in our families, our jobs, but we need to apply it to our spouse. We need to prefer our spouse over ourselves. It's part of having a servant's attitude and a servant's heart in your home towards your spouse. Right. Right. In, in really marriages that, that God uses and that are flourishing and, and happy and fulfilled and content, uh, fulfilled and contented are marriages where both people are willing to put the other spouse first and to, um, uh, as Denise said, prefer your brother above yourself or your sister above yourself. And that applies in general to our relationship with the body yes. of Christ, but specifically uh, in our relationship as husband and wife. And the Bible even talks about preferring your, your brother above yourself or esteeming your brother better than yourself. It doesn't mean there's ever inferiority between a husband and wife. But because we're on equal levels, there's not one that's superior to the other. And because of that, we can surrender to each other and we don't lose anything in the process. As a matter of fact, 
when we're willing to submit ourselves to each other, we gain uh, because the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So when our relationship and the fear of God and our identity is in Christ, we don't lose anything by preferring our, our wives or our husbands above ourselves as a servant in that relationship. So uh, wars come within us when we're, when we're unwilling to die to ourselves, and we're unwilling to prefer our spouse above ourselves. So uh, again, the, uh, I love the Passion Translation. The battle begins inside of you as you fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires. And there's challenges almost on a daily basis uh, in marriage and life for you to have your own way, to do your own yes. thing, that, that what, what, what matters to me is most important. What I care about is the priority of my life. Uh, well, and that's okay if you care about your spouse, but if we care about ourselves more than we care about our relationship with God, or our relationship with our spouse, then we're, we're in trouble. And we're headed to a place where the devil can take advantage of us and create those wars and those fights within us. And, and we lust to have and we lust to desire and we have not because we ask not, because we ask amiss. If we're asking to always fulfill our own desires and not preferring our spouse above ourselves, then we're never going to be satisfied. Right. Uh, because as, as much as we would gain, it would never be enough because we, we give ourselves to lust, we give ourselves to greed, uh, we, we, we can't be content. Uh, I remember Pastor, Pastor Jennifer was preaching the other day about contentment, uh, that learning to whatever state you're in there with to be content, not always trying to have more than you have or to be more than you are, but being content with who you are to build up your spouse and to be happy with the person that God's given you. So, uh, the, the devil is not very original in what he does in our lives. He'll, he'll tempt us to want what we can't have instead of being content and thankful for what we graciously have been given. And because that's what he did. Uh, he, was, he was a praise leader, a worshiper in heaven, but that wasn't enough for him. He had this great position, but he wanted what he couldn't have. He wanted to be like God. And uh, so, again, he's not very original. He'll tempt us to want more than we have and not to be content with what we have and to always look beyond for more. That if, if uh, and, and this is some things that he would even plan in the, in the hearts of men or women. If I had that husband or if I had that wife or if I had what they have or if I could do what they do, then I would be happy rather than being thankful for what God has put in your life to bring fulfillment, to bring happiness, to bring peace. Uh, and, and that's where the Proverbs, uh, proverb of 9, 17 comes in. Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Uh, people want what they, don't, what they can't have uh, rather than enjoying and being pleased and being thankful for what God has so graciously blessed us when with. When you find yourself comparing and focusing on what you don't have, that is an open door for the enemy to begin to lead you in a way that you do not need to go, which eventually will lead to a loss of trust in the home and in your marriage. The devil has a way of making things look better. The, green, the grass is greener on the other side, but that's right. never the case because God didn't make a mistake. He didn't make a mistake. If God, if you feel strongly that God joins you together and you are together by the grace of God and your, your spouse is who you really believe God gave you, those times are going to come, those challenges are going to come. And when the devil begins to sow that discontentment in there and try to make you look around at what others have and don't, what you think they have, and it's always what you think because you never know what another person has until you walk in their shoes and you live in their home. It may appear to be one thing on the inside, on the outside, but it's totally different on the inside. So we need to be careful that our mind and our hearts are not focused 
on other things and other people because that's when the enemy begins to, he sees just a little open door and then he can begin to maneuver his way in and which will eventually lead to a huge a loss of trust. When I think of the story of, of David and Bathsheba, I often, and you've heard many ministers talk about that story, I think it's very important that we take note that we be very aware of our surroundings on a daily basis and that we're being led of the Lord and we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing and not being out of place. We need to be careful of where we are, what we're doing, who we're doing it with, because I truly believe if David had been where he was supposed to be, mm -hmm. the incident with he and Bathsheba would have never taken place. But because David was not where he needed to be, then that led to to having a man kill and committed and committing adultery. And it's important that we let the Lord lead us. Oftentimes, we will feel little convictions. And it may be very innocent conversation. It might be an innocent, what we think is innocent and interpret as, you know, innocent playing around with someone. We need to be cautious of that because the enemy always has an ultimate plan. You may not have a plan. You may be very innocent, but entertaining things that we should not entertain, entertaining people that we should not entertain will always, always lead to a loss of trust in your home. Yeah, when God brings two people together, there will never be anybody other than that spouse that can satisfy uh, the other spouse. When God, uh, like for my wife and I, I know that there will never be anybody else in my life that can satisfy my life the way she does. And and I believe it's the, the other way around as well because God knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. And, and that's, again, why the devil <laughs> will, will make the grass look greener on the other side. And like Denise said, you never know what another couple is going through. That's right. But, and you don't have to be like other people. And, and it's always not a good idea to make comparisons to to for a wife to say to a husband why why aren't you like somebody else's husband so and so's husband or the husband saying why aren't you like somebody else's wife uh, rather than enjoying who god has given you to spend your life with and to cherish them and to honor them and to right. value them because when you take away from each other you're destroying yourself because we become one when we're joined in the Lord. And, and that's another tactic of the enemy. Uh, some people think, well, I'll, I'll be better off because this person would be a better fit for my life. But when you go out to seek after something else that is not ordained of God, then you're not only breaking your relationship, you're destroying your own life. Yes. And you, you're just setting yourself up for a lot of sorrow, yes. a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. Uh, that does not need to be there because there's nobody just like the two of you in your relationship. And you don't have to be like anybody else. And it's not right, it's not wise to compare yourself to anybody else. Be the best that the two of you can be together and make a difference that only the two of you can make because God brought you together to make a difference that will influence those that are around you and, and will have a, a story to tell that's unlike any other, any other person's story or any other married couple's story because it's the two of you. And cherish that, uh, honor that, value that uniqueness that you have in your relationship. And don't allow your, your eyes to wander, your heart to wander, that's right. uh, your emotions to wander, your flesh to wander. But be thankful to God for bringing you together and always be thankful for the person that God has given you because the devil knows how to take advantage of our, our, uh, our flesh. And when you talk about not allow your flesh to wonder, that's keeping your flesh under control and being submission, submitted to the Spirit of God. Right. The fact is that the Scripture is plain. In us, there dwells no good thing. There is nothing good in any of our flesh. And as um, Steve has stated before, Given the right circumstances at the right time in anyone's life, we're capable of all kinds of failure. So the worst thing, I think one of the worst things that any Christian can do is to say what I will not do, I will never do. 
because you do not know what you're capable of under certain circumstances. If when you say that I would never do, you're putting a whole lot of faith and a whole lot of confidence in your flesh. Right. And the Bible said that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. If you're depending on the flesh for anything, I promise you it's going to fail. Absolutely. And no good thing dwells in anyone's flesh. Yeah, the only reason we should ever use the words <laughs> always or never is when it's referring to the promises of God. That's God right. will never leave us nor forsake us. He'll always be faithful to his word. And thank God his grace is always faithful when we're not. And, and that should not give us a license to say, well, I can do whatever I want to do or treat my spouse any way that I want to treat them because it's all about me and not about her and not about him. Uh, but it's about the Lord and it's about his faithfulness and it's about his uh, honoring his grace and his mercy in such a way that we don't want to ever be far from the Lord. We want to be as close to him as we can be because he's been so good to us, yes. so merciful and so gracious. I know he's picked our lives up and our marriage up so many times and we have uh, we can't put any confidence in our in our own ability to make things work or to keep things the way that they are or the way that we want them to be. It's only by the grace of God that we're kept. And uh, we're here today to tell you that God can bring you through anything. And uh, he believes in love. He believes in you. He believes in your prayers. Don't ever underestimate the power or the value of your prayers for your relationship because your relationship is of utmost value and worth to God. Yes. And, and so we want to stand against the, the temptations to devalue each other and to take each other for granted and to be drawn away of our own lust and enticed. And, and that's what we want to get into in the next scripture. In James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15, it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And drawn away there means to be baited, to be lured, to be entrapped. Uh, the devil wants to set traps for our, our relationships, to destroy our relationship, to put a wedge between us, to put gaps between us, to keep us from being one, and, and to devour us and to tear us apart with, with, uh, with lust, with, with indiscretion, with uh, uh, lot breaking of trust, with all of these things that can become so deadly to a relationship, but we don't want to be drawn away. But when we are, we don't have anybody to, to blame but ourselves because we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed. Uh, but, but you can't say the, the devil made you do it or your That's spouse right. made you do it because it was your own lust. You can't be drawn away by anything that's not in you or, right. or that you don't have a struggle that's with right. uh, or that you don't give into. So uh, if you're drawn away, it's something that's in there that the devil can take advantage of. And, and so we can't be like Adam and Eve trying to blame, Eve tried to blame the devil, the serpent who beguiled her. Uh, Adam tried to blame God and his wife. And uh, the devil didn't have anybody left to blame, but but God saw through all that and he, he corrected them according to his justice, his wisdom, and he pointed the finger at them and, and he, he showed them where the blame was. So if, if I'm drawn away of my own lust, I can't blame my wife. I can't blame God. I, I can't even fully blame the devil. It's the devil who tries to draw us away, but he can only take advantage of something that we give him access to. And he'll take advantage of that lust or that desire to have more or to want more or to see someone or something that draws our attention away from what God has for our lives. So we have to be very careful with that. Yes. And when and the Bible goes on to say, when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And in other words, that's when a man indulges his impulses or gives in to them. Just because you have an impulse or you have a desire doesn't mean you have to give into it. And just because you, you feel something in your flesh or experience something in your flesh doesn't mean at that point 
it, it's something that's out of control. It's something that you can give to God. It's something that yes. you can control because everybody has temptations. That's right. Everybody's flesh. Everybody struggles with something. And, and the devil is just so keen to take advantage of the things that we struggle with. But and, until you give in to that, that's then right. you can still give it to God and you haven't, it, you haven't necessarily sinned, but there's that capability or the capacity to sin that we don't want to allow the devil to take advantage of and give into and begin to walk that out. And then the devil has us right in his trap, right. which he intended to ensnare us to begin with. So, so many times it's, we give in, the more we give in to something, the easier it is to take hold and for that thing to take hold of us. So when the Bible talks about, and I, I think about when the Bible talks about flea fornication, it doesn't say, Get so close to it and see how how close you can get right. before you give in. It says to flee. So a lot of times when temptations are in our life, regardless of what that temptation might be, maybe you like to overeat. Maybe um, there's all sorts of temptations we have where we have addictions and things. The, the thing is not to go and go to a bakery and hang out in the bakery where all the sweets are. Right, I'm right. sorry, that was the first thing that came to my mind. But it's not the idea of how close you can get to something without giving in to it. We need to flee. And oftentimes, when we're not where we really need to be, it's just like mm -hmm. David not being where he needed to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. But where we're not where we need to be, in a, spiritually speaking, with the Lord... And when those temptations are there and we give in, and so the next time, once again, the enemy has an open door. He didn't knock the door down. We opened that door for him. And God said that every temptation comes our way. He has made a way for escape for right. us. Right. However, it's how we handle that. Do we walk away from the temptation? Because what happens so many times with people, rather it's affairs or whatever the unfaithfulness might, might be, is you give in little by little, and then all of a sudden there's a stronghold in your life. Right, right. <clears throat> and uh, another point I, we wanted to make was uh, there's many ways to cheat in marriage yes. um, or to have affairs that are not always sexual That's in right. nature. Uh, we can have affairs with, with our own ambitions, uh, that separates people. We can have affairs with our own insecurities, our, our selfish distractions. Uh, we can have affairs with personal sins that can cause us to cheat on our spouse uh, or to cheat our spouse out of the best we can be for them. So there's more ways to cheat than sexual in nature. Uh, you, you cheat when you give yourself to something else that is, deserve, that is uh, set aside for your spouse. Then you're cheating your spouse out of the best that you can be for them, that out of what God has ordained for you to be in their lives. And so you can be a cheater without being involved right. in a sexual relationship. You can be unfaithful to your spouse by being married to your career. Absolutely. So many times that happens with people and they say, well, I, I was working, I was providing for my family, but eventually those times can become many hours a day that actually you're, you're forsaking your spouse and your family because you are, you're having an affair. You are, you are sacrificing them. So affairs happen on all kinds of levels. Right. You can even hang out with your friends even more than taking care of, of your spouse. And that's a whole different story there because a person that does that all the time, they're avoiding things and do not want to be home. That's for another time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Affairs. So affair can be anything Thank that distracts you, you from where your heart should yeah, be right. or where your attention should be. And it occupies your mind. It occupies your, your emotions. It occupies your time. And uh, that takes away from the, uh, the cohesiveness of the marriage situation. Yes. And so we want to avoid those things. Um, <clears throat> Proverbs 25, 19 says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Uh, and, and this goes to the heart of the stability of a relationship. Uh, the relationship should be so strong that the, the, the two people in that relationship should be able to put confidence in each other 
to yes. lean on each other, to know that each other is always going to be there for one another. And uh, the, the uh, example of a broken tooth and a foot out of joint, the thing they have in common is a broken tooth. Uh, when you, you put weight down, when you try to bite on something and there's a broken tooth, your, your tooth is not able to do what it's made to do. And when you try to put weight on a, a foot that's out of joint, then your, your foot is not able to do what it's supposed to do without causing pain. And that's the way an unfaithful person is in a relationship, that you can't put confidence in them to do what they're supposed to do, because if you do put confidence in them and you trust them to be what they're supposed to be or do what they're supposed to do, they will cause pain. Yes. It will be painful to, to put weight on their ability to hold together what they're supposed to hold together. So uh, confidence in an unfaithful man is, is a, uh, a relationship that's, that's on shaky ground. And, and so we want to fight against unfaithfulness. Yes. We want to be stable. We want to be someone who can be trusted. We want to be someone that, uh, I, I want to be someone that my wife can put confidence in to know that I'm going to be there yes. for her, uh, that, that I'm going to carry the weight that I'm supposed to carry without it causing pain that uh, I can throw that weight around in a healthy way and influence my family in a way that I, I can be trusted and in, in not a source of pain or a source of hurt or a source of suspicion or a, a sur source of disappointment. And so I want to work against that. And I, I believe we've come almost to the end of our time again, and uh, we want to go to the Lord for a word of prayer, but we hope that some of the things that we're sharing and that we're talking about is uh, maybe uh, hitting home in a personal way. And if so, then that's, that's so that we can deal with things in a personal way and realize that God has a, a solution and a way out. If we understand what causes us to fall into traps, then we can understand how to get out and how to avoid some of the pitfalls that the enemy wants to throw at us. And God's always going to be there to help us. And we don't want to just leave you with us talking about unfaithfulness, which we're going to continue to do this for several series. But just know that if you if your relationship is where there's you've experienced unfaithfulness or you've even be unfa you've been unfaithful, there is nothing too hard for God to do. There is nothing beyond restoration in the Lord. There is nothing beyond him completely healing. And it being as if it never happened. Yes. I truly believe that. We have seen that. And we know what God can do when you have two people that is willing to do it His way. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to the Lord for a word of prayer. And God, we, again, we want to thank you for everyone that are that is listening today. And we, we trust and pray that you're taking the words by the Spirit of God to touch hearts and to even to begin to mend hearts. And, and God, we're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Right. We know that the enemy's weapon is to use our flesh against us. But God, we thank you that everything that the enemy uses against us, Lord, you can turn it around and cause things to work together for our good yes. because we trust you and we love you. And you said all things work together for a good. You, uh, you said no weapon formed against us will prosper. So there's not anything you can't turn around. Yes. As, as Denise said, as we're willing to bring it before you and say, God, I need your help. I, I can't do this by myself, but I want to please you. I want to be right toward my spouse. And I want you to move in our lives and in our marriage and use our marriage for the glory of God, not for the work of the enemy. And God, thank you, Lord. And, and we come against any, anybody that would be dealing with the things that we're talking yes. about, Lord. And we ask you to bring healing and yes, restoration Lord. and grace and favor in the midst of pain, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of disappointment. Lord, you're there. You said if we make our, our, our bed in hell, you're there. If we ascend up to heaven, you're there. So no matter what phase of life we're in or no matter what situation we may be in, in our relationships, in our marriages, God, you're right there to bring healing and to bring grace and to bring victory 
God, that those involved would know that, Lord, I know you did this, and we give you the praise. So, God, we ask you to move mightily by your Spirit on behalf of those that need your help yes. and your grace. Now, Lord, your grace is more than efficient. Your strength is made perfect in weakness, and you're, made, you're able to make all grace abound, that we having all grace under all circumstances, and we thank you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Appreciate you so much.